Welcome to Gray Street United Church. Let us begin with the statement of territorial acknowledgement. We gather for worship and work in Treaty 1 territory, which is also the homestead of the Métis Nation. For thousands of years, Indigenous peoples walked, the, walked this land and knew it to be the centre of their lives and their spirituality. Good morning, my name is Kathy Welby and I chair the worship team here at Grace Street United Church. On behalf of the Grace Street family, it is my pleasure to extend a warm welcome to the St. Paul's Community of Faith in Beausager. Welcome. Welcome to all who join us in this time of worship. The other exciting news is that during the Advent Christmas season, Folks from both of our respective churches will be participating in our, in our virtual worship services. The Provincial Pandemic Code Red opened the door for this collaboration. What a beautiful way for us to make new friends and share in the journey to Christmas. I have uh, just a couple of short announcements this morning. I would like to remind you about the month of giving wish list. Please consider contributing to one or more of these initiatives. We ask that you keep your donations at home until we can safely start collecting them. The tentative date is December 12th. Now that's totally dependent on the pandemic restrictions, so please stay tuned. The donators still have plans to proceed with the bagged lunches for those living on the streets. We are contributing cookies, so if you're able to help out by baking some cookies, please give me a call. Thank you. Today, we light this Christ candle, remembering that Christ is among us as we gather and worship in his name. Now we invite you to prepare, to prepare yourself for the service. Light a candle if you wish. Take a deep breath. Relax and live into the moment.
From the voices of the prophets, we hear that when we call on God, God answers. God will be with us in times of trouble, in times of challenge. God will hug us and hold us. God will heal us. God is the one in whom we can find refuge and strength and courage for the road ahead. Let us open our hearts to welcome God around us, among us, within us. Let us pray. We journey upon the path that you set us, thankful for our journey together. May we be all that we can be through your infinite love. Amen. And now we pray as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, our Mother and, and Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Hi guys, it's great to see you. Well, almost see you. I know you can see me, but I can't see you. I have a question for you today. Do you remember when? Do you have a memory of this church, our church, or people around here, something that you find very dear to your heart, something that you really, really enjoyed? The question, do you remember when? Kathy, do you remember? Do you have something you can share with us? I do. Oh, boy. And thank you for the heads up, Susan, so I could be prepared. <laughs> and I think I have a good one. And hopefully John and Bob aren't going to steal it. You know, when I first came to this church, everybody had the first Saturday in November circled. It was the annual UCW Christmas Tea, Bake, and Craft Sale. Well, you know, as a young mom, that was my afternoon out. The older ladies loved to look after my baby, Heather. You remember Heather? You probably haven't seen her for a while. And I got to do Christmas shopping. And after the shopping was completed, you know, we got to join other folks for a cup of tea. And the bake oven, which used to be at the corner of Gray and Monroe, their famous raisin, cherry, and apple cinnamon bread. And then, of course, we got to sample some of the Christmas dainties that we may have bought at the bake sale. Well, you know, the spirit of gathering with church folks and community neighbors was definitely a highlight. And many friends were made over the years. It was a great time. Huh. Do I remember gathering with friends and people from the church. I do remember when we were all here. Oh, it's been so long and I miss everybody. That's one of my memories is uh, having fun with the kids and teasing some of the older people and uh, popping corn and, and doing all kinds of things. You kids, I miss you. But I'm thankful that we have had that time. John, do you have a remember when story that you would like to share? I'll put my mask on and you can. Uh, I have a couple of I remember whens. Uh, about 20 years ago, I first started coming to Gray Street. And one of the first things I went to uh, with my wife was the uh, sweetheart tea. Oh, and, wow. And uh, remember Arnie coming up and singing to all the ladies. And that, that was a, a fun time. <laughs> and my other memories are Christmas. I really like the midnight services. And, and uh, I always put it bugging people's ear that I like to see those return. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, not this year. Uh. <laughs> Bob, do you have a story you'd like to share with us? Well, I haven't been around here nearly as long as some of the others, uh, but my favorite memories obviously revolve around music and silliness. And for me, it was back when we had uh, a 35 member choir when I first joined here. That was uh, so much fun, lots of harmonies, great times. The Christmas cantatas were always so much fun. And uh, after Badgering me for several years, Greg finally got me to join into a dinner theater, absolutely terrified of what I was doing, <laughs> and it was probably the most fun I've ever had. So uh, thank you, Greg, for that. Those are my <laughs> memories. That's just a small example of do you remember when in your church? There are so many things to be thankful for, the things like the dinner theaters and the teas and the sweetheart dances and the children and um, the many people that we have had in the pews throughout the years. Things have changed a lot in the last five years since I've been here. So it's often wonderful to take a little bit of time and remember when. These are some of the things that are, are sacred to our hearts and also 
we are thankful for. November is our month of remembering. Uh, Remembrance Day comes in, re in November, and it's a good time to sit back and remember some of those other things as well. And along with remembering, we always give thanks. So let's listen to our children's YouTube now, Remember, or no, it is Give Thanks. Yeah! Our first reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power? for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And our second reading from chapter 25 of the Gospel of Matthew. 
when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word as it is written. Thanks be to God. We begin with prayer. Loving God in those times when we are unsure Remind us that you are with us. When we fear what lies around us, remind us that you are as close as the air that we breathe. Remind us as well that your word is within us. Help us to hear the message that you may have for us here today and strengthen us to share that good news of your loving presence with everyone that we meet. Amen. This morning, I'm going to take another poll, just one simple little poll. I'm asking everyone to participate, virtually, of course. Now, don't worry, it's not a difficult question. In fact, there's only one question, and there are no wrong answers. Here it is. What are you most likely to forget? Everybody forgets something on a fairly regular basis. Some people forget names of people that they've just met, and I know that's really awkward. Some people are famous for getting where they have put their glasses, even when those glasses are on the top of their head. Am I describing anyone no. around here? Maybe Bob, but that's all. <laughs> How about when you put your cell phone or your shoes or 
mm, forget your locker combination. This morning I forgot my car keys. I went running back in the house and I looked all over and for some reason I put my hands down. They were in my left hand pocket. Ay, 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 I hate that. Why do we so easily forget things that are fairly important to us or we really shouldn't forget? I think it's likely because we are not living in the moment. Our mind is woohoo, someplace else. We're feeling rushed or stressed or distracted. And so we just simply forget. A woman wrote on a website called Brightside. She was telling about her stressful morning recently when she overslept and had to hurry to get to work. Has that ever happened to you? She rushed around her apartment, pulling on clothes and throwing supplies into her handbag. When she got to the office, she finally sat down to catch her breath. And as she did, she glanced into her handbag and saw two eyes peering up at her. In her rush to get ready, she had somehow put her cat into her handbag. The shocked kitten sat calmly in her bag all the way to the office. Yeah, strange things can happen when you're feeling rushed or stressed or distracted. Last month was a month of Thanksgiving. And this month is a month of remembrance. Now, let's not get really confused. We don't give thanks for one month and remember in a different month and then all done, finished. We gave thanks one month. We remembered the needs uh, happily the next month. We don't have to worry about that anymore. That's not how it works. Sometimes I think that we should, however, set aside one day each year for doing all of our complaining and then use the 364 days left to remember and thank God for the many blessings that we have had showered upon us. Why don't we thank God continuously every day for our many, many blessings? How could we forget something so important? I guess it happens because we're hurried and distracted and stressed. Our mind is someplace else. And so we forget the incredible blessings of being alive, of having a sense of hope, of having people who love us, a roof over our head, all incredible blessings. How can we possibly forget? John, a lawyer, reached a really low point in his life. He had been twice divorced. He was out of shape. He was having money problems. Did he have, what did he have to look forward to? How did he get stuck in this downward spiral? But in the midst of his tough circumstances, an idea came to John. The idea was, write one thank you note every day for a whole year. This was John's way of forcing himself to notice something positive in his life. He began writing one thank you note each day to family members and friends, colleagues, former bosses, professors, teachers, everyone that he knew. And this act of writing one thank you note each day changed John's life. He wrote about it in his book, A Simple Act of Gratitude. His relationships all improved. He left his negative mindset behind, and he began to notice dozens of reasons each day to truly be thankful. And as he became more thankful, he became more joyful and hopeful. The Apostle Paul, in our scripture today, didn't write 365 thank you notes, but he did write about one half of the letters that make up the New Testament. And Paul's letters overflow with thanksgiving. 
No matter what challenges he endured, Paul's letters, like the letter to the church in Ephesia, were filled with thankfulness. And so they overflow with joy as well. Because thankfulness and joy go together like peanut butter and jelly. Today's Bible passage gives us a great example of heartfelt gratitude put into action. Paul was thankful for the faith and love of his fellow believers. In fact, Paul was so thrilled by the faith and love of the Ephesian church that he wrote, I have not stopped praying and giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers always. I have not stopped giving thanks for you. That's some serious gratitude. He was inspired by their faith in the Lord Jesus and encouraged by their love for one another. Their faith in Jesus gave them a foundation of hope and a purpose in their lives. And it inspired their genuine love for one another. Stop and think for a moment, just one moment, about how amazing the church truly is. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. When you are not a part of the church, or when you are a part of the church, you gain an instant family of people who truly do love each other as much as Jesus loves them. Yes, in many ways we are hypocrites. None of us lives up to Jesus' example all the time. But you walk into any Christian church in this world and ask people the question, how has your church family shown its love to you? And you will get story after story of people whose lives were changed by the love and encouragement of their church. Faith in action means love in action. Paul put his thankfulness into action by praying regularly for the church, the people. How often do you pray for your church? How often do you pray for the worldwide church? Paul didn't take the church for granted. He made a point to regularly pray that God would bless the church. And what was the greatest blessing he could pray for? That they would come to know God better. Because we, as we grow in our knowledge of God, we grow in our level of love and joy, faith, hope, and peace. Something happens when we pray regularly for our church. Our love for our fellow believers starts to grow. Our unity with others starts to grow. I can almost guarantee you that the people who complain the most about their church are the people who pray the least for their church. The people who start controversies and conflicts in the church are the people that are least likely to serve in ministries in the church. When we pray for the church, we start to see more opportunities where we can serve others. And when we pray for the church, God may work all sorts of positive changes in our church. But more importantly, God will work all sorts of positive changes in us. Today, this final Sunday in the church year, we have the sacred opportunity of remembering and giving thanks for 10 members that have passed away this past year. They are members of our church family that because of the current pandemic or whatever reason, have ha not had life celebrations or life celebrations in the way that they had hoped. It is more than fitting to remember and to give thanks to God for their lives and their involvement or connection to Gray Street and in the community in the, and in the world. As a community of faith, we give thanks and we remember. 
we remember with fondness these lives of reverence. Just as Paul said, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. As a faith community, we do not take for granted those 10 lives or any of the people in our faith community or our neighboring communities. We give thanks for them. We give thanks for you. And we remember. We remember in compassionate love now and always. We are blessed in Christ. Notice the many blessings of life that you usually take for granted. Thank God that you are surrounded by other believers who share your hope and your joy. Put your thankfulness into action by praying that others would know the great gift of salvation, grace, and love through Jesus Christ, and that our fellow believers will grow in their faith in God and their love for one another. And together, together we can share in a thankfulness and a joy that will draw others to Jesus and change lives. May it be so. Amen. And our response to God for these words of wonder and life, God offers us good news. We respond to God with our thanksgiving. God, you have spoken and we have answered. Accept the gifts today as a token of our thanks for all the blessings that surround us. May these gifts, the gifts of our talents, our money, our inspiration, build a better life for the future. Loving God, we present the gift of our very selves, excited to share with those around us and greet you on our way. May our prayers speak to the world of your love. Amen. This morning is the final Sunday of our mo month of giving and remembering. It also happens to be the last Sunday of the liturgical calendar marking the reign of Christ. 
With that in mind, it seemed only fitting that we take a few moments to recognize and remember the 10 Gray Street family members that have died during these past 12 months. It has been a tough year saying farewell to so many of our friends and church family. Our faith provides us with the assurance that they are well and in a better place. A candle has been lit in memory of each of these members no longer with us. I would now like to remember them individually by name with words as shared by church friends. Harold Castleman, genuine, loved to sing, grounded, calming, magnetic personality. Jeanette Gertson, proud of her indigenous roots, soft-spoken, warm smile, generous heart, friend. Paul Harris, God-loving, people-loving, kind, honest, humble. Joyce Hay, independent, caring, fun-loving, honest, musical. Doug Henney, family first, artist always, caring, a dry wit, and a musician. Margaret Lowe, a strong biblical knowledge, kind, gentle, loved children and dogs, and a friend. Irene McGee, God-loving, generous, hardworking, courageous, and a good friend. Sarah Scott, family-minded, kind, perseverant, stoic, and positive. Alvin Tran, cheerful, friendly, interesting, funny, unpretentious. And Lillian Weston, caring, generous, faithful, honest, funny. We thank them for sharing these gifts with our community of faith for so many years. We miss them. I would like, now like to close with a reading entitled, A Message of Hope by Ashley Rice. When somebody dies, a cloud turns into an angel and flies up to tell God to put another flower on a pillow. A bird gives the message back to the world and sings a silent prayer that makes the rain cry. People disappear, but they never really go away. The spirits up there put the sun to bed, wake up the grass, and spin the earth in dizzy circles. Sometime you can see them dancing in a cloud during the daytime when they are supposed to be sleeping. They paint the rainbows and also the sunsets and make waves splash and tug at the tide. They toss shooting stars and listen to wishes. And when they sing wind songs, they whisper to us, don't miss me too much. The view is nice and I am doing just fine. Let us pray. Lord God, we pause in the midst of this hour of worship and as a new week begins to invite you into all of those busy parts of our lives, we confess that sometimes we are so preoccupied with what we are doing that we do not remember you as the source of our lives and simply give thanks. We also sometimes make excuses or fail to accept your call to be as loving, as creative, and as forgiving as possible. We pray for eyes to see your healing and restoration at work in our own families, in our community, and in our nation, in our church, and in the wider church. This morning, we pause and 
give thanks and remember Harold, Jeanette, Paul, Joyce, Doug, Margaret, Irene, Sarah, Alvin, and Lillian. We give thanks for the support that we give and we receive from each other. Loving God, during this difficult time of world pandemic, we pray for all brothers and sisters that find isolation to be quite difficult. For persons, for loved ones, for those that have contracted the virus, for their families that also live with it. And God, we pray that that vaccine will not be long and will be available and effective very soon. We pray for those that need help to find their way. For people that need rest, we pray. For those whose life is heavy, we give thanks for the healing and health that many have. Suffering God, give us the strength to care for each other. And we ask you for your healing touch for those that we name now, either out loud or silently in our hearts. We pray for endurance and healing for all dealing with illnesses of all forms. We pray for persons that anxiously await test results. We pray for the caregivers of those that are ill. And we pray for hope for all who mourn the death of someone dear. We pray for those that are either un underemployed or not employed at this time. We know, God, that your Holy Spirit is ever all around. And we pray for the courage to serve and for Christ's love to show in all that we do. Let your confidence surround us and help us to deal with whatever challenge lies ahead. God of us all, Hear our prayers, and in your love, answer. Amen.
Go from here, both challenged and comforted by the Spirit. Go from here, surrounded by the great love of God Creator. Go from here to praise your Maker while you have breath. And to love your neighbor as yourself. of Christ be with you all and also with you. Amen.